You'll have to forgive the small furry animal for playing in the background. <laughs> she was an animal found in the shed and has made herself quite at home. <laughs> Anyways, this here is an Encyclopedia Britannica. Volume 5, published in 1894. Now, in lieu of recent events, <laughs> and perhaps some weird Piscean sense of foreknowledge, I recorded a passage regarding socialism for you all to discern and talk about amongst yourselves and what have you, given the current political climate, with some, you know, historical context and what have you. Personally, I found that some of the ways in which the narrative was being framed in this piece reflected some, you know, de-radicalization efforts. Which inherently is not all bad, although that could be up for discussion as well. I mean, I think a lot of time there is a lot of ignorance, so many ways for so many people throughout our society and the world. And I mean, I very much so stress concepts regarding human rights, personal freedoms, like, etc, etc. Fill it in the fucking blanks, <laughs> okay? Um, and given the current political climate, among other things going on in this wild and wonderful world, I am presenting this to you to do with it what you may. Because geez, like, you know, I have nothing to fucking worry about, given this stupid shenanigans. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm already on a list, so. I'd be curious to what you have to say and or think and or how any of this makes you feel, because a lot of time silly trigger words and what have you have a lot of stigma behind them and I also made a video last year in regards to anarchism and its modern incarnation now granted it's not everyone but I think a lot of times when people think of anarchism they just you know inherently think everyone's throwing Molotov cocktails and you know it could never work right But I definitely think that those types of tactics have been used for a long time to dissuade any completely generally <laughs> valid criticisms regarding authority. So let's hit the big red button together. <laughs> no movement of modern times has awakened or deserved greater attention than the one indicated by this title. Its accurate definition is exceedingly difficult, owing to an entire lack of agreement concerning the true limits of the word socialism. In general, it may be described as that movement which seeks by economic changes to destroy the existing inequalities of the world's social conditions. For convenience of discussion, it may be best to divide the socialists of America into two classes. First, those who believe the necessary changes can be secured only by the early or immediate employment of force, and second, those who believe in more conservative methods, such as agitation and peaceful combination. Into all socialistic schemes, the idea of governmental change enters. With this radical difference, however, some socialists rely upon the final abolition of existing forms of government and seek the establishment of a pure democracy. 
while others insist upon giving to government a paternal form, thus increasing its function and power instead of diminishing it. Of course, its paternal functions are to be exercised in the interest of the wage toilers of the country. 1. The more radical wing of the Socialist of America has given expression to its life and views in the several platforms and declarations of the International Working People's Associations and the International Workmen's Association, sometimes designated as the Blacks and the Reds, respectively. The latter are regarded as the more moderate and conservative wing and have probably the larger constituency in America. The International Working People's Association, Blacks, in a manifesto issued a few years ago in New York, after reciting the grievances under which the laboring classes rest by reason of the oppressions of capital, proceeds to declare, quote, that they, the oppressors, will not resign these privileges voluntarily, we know, that they will not make any concession, we likewise know, since we must then rely on the kindness of our masters for whatever redress we have, and knowing that from them no good may be expected, <laughs> there remains but one recourse, force. Our forefathers have not only told us that against despots force is justifiable because it is the only means, but they themselves have set the immemorial example, end quote. They avow among others the following demands. One, destruction of the existing class rule by all means, i.e. energetic, relentless, and international action. Two, establishment of a free society based upon cooperative organization of production. Three, free exchange of, pro <laughs> of production of all sorts. Four, secular education. Five, equal rights for all sexes and races. Six, public affairs to be regulated by free contract. This section of socialists believes in the use of dynamite and other explosives as a means to the end of social regeneration. The International Workmen's Association published in 1884 a Declaration of the Rights of Man, which is given to the world in a brief treatise on socialism by A.J. Starkweather and S. Robert Wilson. This manifesto was issued in San Francisco, California. It declares that liberty is the power which belongs to a man of exercising all his faculties at pleasure. Every individual is entitled to an equal proportional share of all the natural advantages of earth. The whole people should hold the land, light, air, and water together with other of nature's resources as the natural heritage in common of all mankind. Every individual is entitled to an equal proportionate share of all accumulated wealth created by past generations, and that that wealth should be held by society as the natural heritage in common of all mankind. Debt, profit, interest, rent, and the competitive system of industry are declared as instruments of degradation and tyranny and cancers upon the social body. So also, are the present methods of punishing crime, the present monetary system, the present methods of suffrage, education, jurisprudence, church, and military. The rights of property is substantially limited by the rights acquired by production. So long as members of society fulfill their portion of the social contract, they have a right to demand of society the means necessary to provide for their subsistence. Society is bound also to ensure the means of existence to those who are incapable of labor. Every act against the imprescriptible rights of man by whomsoever exercised, even in the name of the law itself and within the forms it prescribes is arbitrary and void. The very respect due to law forbids submission to it. And if the attempt be made to execute such act by violence or by artifice, it is not only permitted but enjoined upon every individual to repel such assaults even by force. Government should be as nearly as possible pure democracy. Governments at, as at present constituted are simply means of enslavement. 
appended to this declaration is an explanation of the methods of organization of the IWA, in which the individual workman is invited to gather a group of seven others, and after a series of educational conferences, the members of this group are to become individually the leaders of other groups of eight. And so on, the object of these gatherings is stated to be education, in rights, and in chemistry. Next, two, should be named that the class of socialists seeking immediate social renovation by sweeping and revolutionary changes, but by methods which are conservative. The Socialist Labor Party most distinctly represents this class. It proposes to accomplish its ends gradually, but seeks as present possibilities, one, the establishment of a Bureau of Labor in connection with the U.S. government, two, reduction in the hours of labor, three, abolition of convict labor, four, the enactment of an employer's liability law, five, the prohibition of child labor, six, compulsory education, seven, factory mine and workshop inspection, eight, inspection of food and dwellings, and nine, payment of all wages in cash. Three, a still more modified form of socialism has arisen in connection with the adoption of the theories of Henry George as expressed in his work, Progress and Poverty. This has given rise to the formation of the Anti-Poverty Society, whose work for the present is mainly educational, but which aims at a final enforcement of its views by political action. It declares, quote, that all men are created by Almighty God with certain inalienable rights, that these inalienable rights are the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that life cannot be had without proper access to the materials of which this earth is made, and that therefore God has given an equal and indefeasible right to each and every one of his children of access to these materials, that no prescription, no vested right, no law can deprive the child of a beggar of the same right as the child that is born of an imperial throne possesses to equal common ownership of the bounties of nature." End quote. Proceeding upon this assumption, it is claimed that the painful inequalities of existence are due to the infraction of a natural law. Land being the common property of all, the wealthy landholder is enriched by an increase of value on his land, which is an unearned increment. And the population which caused this increase ought to be rewarded with what itself has created. All private ownership in land should be abolished and the community should take in taxation its rental value. Four, Christian Socialism. Recognizing the manifest wrongs and burdens concomitant to our present economic conditions, a large number of Christian writers have addressed themselves to this subject. Their labors have been confined to seeking ameliorations rather than radical changes at the present, and to emphasizing the idea of human brotherhood, in response to which it is claimed. Men should seek more nearly to equalize the conditions of human life by justice that is kind, rather than to repair the ravages of injustice by charity. This form of socialism, which is claimed to grow out of the life of Jesus and from the very spirit of the Gospels, is a powerful factor in the life of America today and cannot fail of a favorable reaction on the violent spirit of discontent excited by the philosophic socialism. American socialists, with the possible exception of many in the last named class, are generally agreed according to Professor R. T. Ely on four points. The first of these is that it is desirable to abolish private property in instruments of production, not in income so far as this consists simply in articles of use and enjoyment, and which cannot serve as a further basis of production. Two, not to abolish capital, but the distinct class of capitalists. Three, they believe in the use of the best machinery and in improved methods of production and in the organization of production on a vast international basis. Four, they believe in cooperation as a substitute for the wage system. The growth of socialism in this country has been rapid and will probably keep pace with the just causes of discontent. The centralization of wealth the rise of monopolies, the control of many of the necess necessaries of life by gigantic trusts, accompanied as they often are by combinations on the part of employers to restrict the wages and restrain the liberty of the employed by means of ironclad oaths 
and blacklist. These are denounced as artificial forms of oppression, which are super added to the natural disadvantages arising for the laboring classes by reason of the use of improved means of production and the rapid increase of laborers by unrestricted immigration. The Republic of Plato and the Utopia of Sir Thomas More were early expressions of human yearning to which Christian prophecy responds in the promise of a millennium. It is not improbable that a gradual advance in liberal legislation whereby the powers of avarice shall be limited and the rights of the toiling masses shall be restored, may avert the use of violence, and that, in the orderly advance of a Christian civilization, there shall come at last to the people of this country an equitable and universal distribution of those advantages which are possession of nature's gifts and our inheritance of centuries of advance in intelligence and power shall afford. The socialism that is linked to materialism is threatening and violent. Its only hope of ameliorating the conditions of the oppressed is in the use of force. Those forms of socialism which are affected by Christian thought are hopeful of a solution of existing difficulties by methods that are educational and peaceful. That the wrongs complained of are real, that they are becoming more burdensome with the advance of time, and that they will become unendurable if left to go unchecked is apparent to every thoughtful mind. The cure by violence is full of suggestions of horror. It may be avoided if, instead of ignoring these wrongs, men will address themselves to remedy and by giving emphasis to the idea of human brotherhood, secure such concessions to the world's toilers as shall bring greater possibilities of happiness to all. This video is intended for educational purposes only, and the views herein <laughs> may not reflect my personal views or the views of Alphabet, the United States government, the various parent companies of YouTube and Bing and whoever else, like, you know, yada yada yada. Yeah, you get the picture. Okay, bye. Bye!